In a moment, James Stewart as the six shooter. Tomorrow night here on NBC, there's a complete lineup of both music and laughter for you. On the musical side, there's the Dinah Shore Show, followed by Songs with Sinatra. For humor, the Bob Hope Show, followed by the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Then comes Can You Top This? and your nightly visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. A great Friday night lineup of programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. We'll be turning in here, Michael. Huh? As long as they're going into town anyway, we can be seeing whether there might be anything Homer Donfield's needing. Well, we got enough to do, Pa, just getting the things we need for ourselves. Oh, now, what kind of a neighbor are you, Michael O'Hara? We'll turn in, I said. Okay, okay. Uh, that's one thing that you'll have to be learning. A man can't live by himself. And there's many a time Mr. Donfield's done us a favor. Yeah, sure, sure. Hold on. Ho, 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 ho. Mr. Donfield! It's Sean O'Hara, Mr. Donfield! I don't see no sign of him. Maybe he's gone into town himself. Uh, hold on. Don't, hold don't hold be hold in such hold a hurry now. The least we can do is... Hold ah, hold Mike, would you listen now? Huh? Them cows. There's something the matter with Mr. Donfield's cows. I reckon they're hungry, Paul. That's what it sounds like to me. Ah, yeah, that's more than hunger, the trouble in them animals. Uh, uh, come on, boy. Uh, now, have a look. Oh, now, Paul, wait Michael. All right. <laughs> Like as not, Mr. Danfield ain't going to appreciate us butting into his affairs. He's always been able to run this farm without look any... Look there, would huh? you look? Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, they've not been milked, that's what it is. The sun's in the middle of the sky and they've not been milked. Yeah. Well, I thought you there was something wrong here. I felt it the minute we pulled up in the yard, so I did. Maybe Mr. Danfield's sick. Maybe that's it, huh? Uh, sure, and I hope that's all it is. But when I get one of these foreboding feelings, well... Uh... Mr. Donfield! Well, try it, Pa. See if it's locked. Oh, no, I don't know. It doesn't seem right to enter another man's house when he's not... For his own sake, ain't it? Here. If he ain't home, we'll leave him a note explaining the... Pa. What is it, Mike? Over there. Across the room by the sofa. Michael, that's Mr. Donfield. Oh. Oh, he has been shot bad. Real bad. Uh, but there's the spark of life left into him. Would you get the doctor, Michael, as fast as you can, and I'll stay here till you yeah, come yeah, back. Yeah, sure, boss. Uh, sure, and the sure. sheriff, too, the sheriff. You best bring the sheriff. Yep, boss. That poor Mr. Dunfield. I'd expected to reach Pearl City before nightfall, but it looked like I'd been a mite optimistic. The sky had already lost most of its color, and I still had a good 15 miles to go, so I slowed Scar down to a walk. Easy, boy, easy. Oh, the here is. Uh, I started looking around for a place to make camp. It didn't really much matter when I got to town. The spring roundups were sure to be over, and a day or two, one way or the other, wouldn't make any difference about my finding a summer job. Besides being out in the rain for another night, I'd probably get a lot more sleep than I would in any of those hotel beds. Well, about a mile further on, I I spotted a little flicker of light behind a couple of gray-green boulders. And when I rode up closer, I heard somebody singing and playing a guitar. Ah. Oh, looked like I wasn't the only one in the range that night. Oh, 
Howdy. Howdy. Wow, that sounds real pleasant. Mind if I use your fire for a spell? You're more than welcome to it, mister. Climb down from your horse and make yourself at home. Wow. <coughs> Thanks very much. I'm heating up some beans. Plenty for both of us. Well, that's mighty considerate of you, but I've got some grub of on here. Well, there's no point in wasting it, is there? Like I said, I got more than enough here. That is, if you don't mind eating beans. No, no, no. I reckon that's what I'm carrying, too. My name's Ponsett, Britt Ponsett. Well, I'll be darned. Huh? I sure heard about you, Mr. Ponsett, and that gun of yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm Toby Yeager. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Yeager. Here, just let me get my guitar out of your way so you can sit down. Oh, thanks. Ah, I hope I didn't interrupt your singing. That sounded real pretty. Uh, it just sort of helps to pass the time, especially when I'm alone. Mm-hmm. Did you care to try a tune, Mr. Ponson? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not much of a singer. You just go right ahead. Well, ain't anybody going to hear us, except in a few coyotes, and they're not likely to be very critical. What do you say? Should we give our vocal cords a little exercise while we're waiting for them beans to heat up? Well, as I said... Oh, no. I, you know, I like that third verse. Mm. Oh, beat the drum slowly and play the pipe lowly. Come on, Mr. Ponson. Play the dead march as you carry me along. Take, Take me, me to, to the, the green valley, valley where lay, lay the sod o'er me. For I'm a young cowboy and know I done wrong. <laughs> well, uh, George, sounds like we were mistaken about those coyotes. Yeah, you, you hear? This is one of their favorites. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> How about you providing some music now? Oh, me? No. Yeah, here's the guitar. No, no. no I, I'm sorry. I just don't play at all. Oh, come on, you're joshing me, Ponsett. No, 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 I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about it. Well, well, most any cowboy can get a tune out of a guitar. Maybe so, maybe so, but it just seems like I never had much of an ear for music. And... You don't need no ear. Here, come on, let me show you. Huh? Now, you just watch my fingers. Yeah. You'll see there's nothing to it. Well. Yeah, that's simple enough, ain't it? Well, I... Now, I'll that... tell you what I'll do. I'll make the chords, and you do the strumming. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you go uh, ahead. You uh, go ahead and strum. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, you're doing fine. Oh. That's just fine. <laughs> the strumming part's a little easier than the cording, though. Isn't oh, it? it's all easy once you get the hang of it. Now, give me your left hand. How's that? Your left what? hand. I'll, I'll put your fingers where they belong for the first chord. I see now. Yeah, yeah. There. Okay, strum. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, let's see. All right, all right. Uh, here's the next chord. See, see now. Uh-huh. Now here, here's the third one. There. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of fun. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. Now you do them yourself. What? Those yep. three chords I just taught you. Oh, you mean uh, you do them all alone? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Well. Uh... <laughs> Now, this contraption just isn't for me. Oh, you mustn't give up yet. A little more practice, you'd be a first-rate guitar player. No, I was ma- mighty flattering, Jaeger, but I think I'd better stick to my humming. Well. Now, you go right ahead, and I'll play some more. Uh, that, that tune you were trying to teach me, that sound real pretty. You mean this one? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard that before, have I? Oh, it's brand new. Folks back east are all singing it, but it ain't got this far west yet. Oh, I see. Are you from the east? No, no. Utah's my home. But I spent a couple of months in Chicago last winter. That's where I picked up this tune. I see. Uh, I sure didn't cotton to city life, Mr. Ponson. I headed back this way first chance I got. Been laying track for the Santa Fe. That's all? Mm Hmm. Line reaches Pearl City now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. But they had to stop there for a spell on account of some legal ruckus about the right of way. So I took my pay, bought myself that mare over yonder, and moseyed on. Mm hmm. I don't know what it is about this song. Once you hear it, it, it just sort of sticks with you. Yeah, yeah, it does. Silver Threads Among the Gold. That's the title. 
Darling, I am growing old Silver threads among the gold Shine upon my brow today Life is fading fast away But my darling, you will be, will be Always young and fair to me Yes, my darling, you will be Real nice, Jagger. Oh, God. Uh oh. Oh, there they are again. <laughs> it's got some more verses, but that's the only one I can remember. Do you care to join in? <laughs> no, no. I think I bothered the coyotes enough for one evening. <laughs> well, it looks like them beans are getting hot. I suppose we can interrupt our concert until after supper. Probably sound better on a full stomach, anyhow. Oh, I don't know, Jaeger. In my case, I reckon it wouldn't make much difference. <laughs> well, we had our fill of beans, and then Jaeger picked up his guitar again. Did some more singing. I... Oh, what with the music and all, I felt kind of sleepy, so I spread out my bedroll. And... Last thing I remember is hearing that guitar as I dropped off. The next morning after we had breakfast, Jaeger headed on south and I swung north toward Pearl City. A couple of hours later, I was riding past the farms just this side of town. I noticed a buggy and four or five horses pulled up in Homer Danfield's front yard. Uh, Homer had always lived alone ever since I could remember. He never had been much of a man for company either, so I turned off the road into the lane leading to the house. Sean O'Hara was sitting on the steps whittling. On the size of the pile of shavings at his feet, figured he'd been doing for quite a spell. Whoa, whoa, Scar, whoa, whoa. Oh, Sean. Huh? Hi. Don't you remember me? Britt Ponsett. Oh, why, for goodness sake, Mr. Ponsett, I never had no idea you was in these parts. Lord, it feels a miracle you've come. Oh, what's, what are you talking about, Sean? Oh, it's a terrible thing that's happened to Homer Dunfield. What? what? Him him lying in there right now, hovering between life and death, so he is. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. He's pretty sick, huh? He's been shot, Mr. Ponsett. A big hole right over his chest. Is that so? Uh, uh, it was along about noontime yesterday when we found him, Miss Son Michael and myself. Oh, that poor man. Well, well, just what happened, Sean? Well, now, if you ask me, it was a thief who done it. Sure, and from, from the looks of his house, somebody turned things every which way searching for valuables. And besides, anybody who knew Homer Donfield, anybody from around Pearl City, that is, they'd have no call to try to kill him. He was a well-liked man, Mr. Ponson. Well, he sure was, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, and the doctor's staying with him almost 24 hours now. And Sheriff Gentle, too. But you know, the poor Homer has not breathed a conscious breath during the whole day and the night that followed. Yeah, and like as not, he'll never be able to tell us just exactly what... Oh, hello, Sheriff. Eh? Oh, howdy, Briff. Where'd you come from? Oh, just passed through on the way to town. And Sean's been telling me about Homer. Uh -huh. yeah, has there been any improvement, Sheriff? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it an improvement. He did come, too, for a couple of minutes. Oh? You don't see? Yes, he told me what he could. But I'm afraid it won't do much good. The fellow broke in night before last, long about midnight. He was a stranger. Homer had never seen him before. And he didn't get a very good look at him, either. Well, he was trying to rob Mr. Dunfield. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it was. Uh-huh. Homer heard him prowling around in the parlor and come downstairs. The fellow let fly with a slug, caught Homer right under the shoulder. And he's lost a lot of blood. The doc thinks maybe one of his lungs is nicked, too. Well, that sure is too bad. Yeah. Well, not much I can do without a description, evidence. Uh, sure, no one couldn't he tell you anything at all about the man. No, as far as Homer can recollect, he was medium height, medium build. That's about all. Except for the song he was singing. The song? Yeah. Homer didn't pass out right after he was shot. 
Not entirely. He remembers hearing the fellow searching around and uh, humming and singing to himself while he was at it. Something about silver and gold and getting old. Homer ain't too clear in his own mind, and well, as far as I can tell, it's a song I never heard before. You ever hear it, Sean? No, it don't sound familiar to me, Sheriff. What about you, Britt? Britt? I've heard it, Sheriff. Huh? At least I've heard something mighty similar. Mighty similar. <laughs> We'll return to James Stewart as the sick shooter in just a moment. Our country was founded by men who had faith in God and who were willing to endure hardship and sacrifice for the sake of that faith. In these troubled times, there is need to support a way of life based on the enduring principles of religion, which knit the family together, make for good citizenship, and build the character of the children. The religious institutions in your community need your interest and support, so take an active part in religious affairs. Your pastor, rabbi, or priest will give you invaluable family counsel and aid if you're a newcomer to the community. To face the problems of the future, America must be morally strong. And that moral strength comes through worship and faith. Go to church this week and take someone with you. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter. Starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Well, I told Sheriff Gentle about running into Toby Yeager and his guitar, about the tune Toby tried to teach me. Of course, that didn't prove that Yeager had anything to do with shooting Homer Danfield, even though it was a new song, well... Like Toby said, it was popular back east, and there might be other folks who knew it out west, too. But Yeager had been around Pearl City lately. He told me so himself. He was a medium-sized man and a stranger. So I gave the sheriff all the details I could remember. Yeah. Well, it sure ain't much to go on, but it's something. I reckon we better get started. Hmm? Tell you the truth, Britt, the doc don't figure Homer will last more than another day or two. And if we don't get this Jaeger fellow back before he... Well, you were saying that he sung a certain song. That ain't going to convict him of murder. No, no, of course not. Well, let's go. Well, you don't need me, Sheriff. I need somebody to pick up this fellow's trail and point him out to me, don't I? Well, I could tell you. Oh, we're just wasting time, Britt. If we're going after this man, let's get started. All right, all right, Sheriff, all right. <laughs> It took us a couple hours to ride back to the place where Jaeger and I had camped for the night. When we'd split up, he said he was heading south, so the sheriff and I looked around for his trail that way. We didn't have too much trouble finding it, and there was only one thing. He hadn't gone south, at least wise not for very long. As soon as he hit Little Creek, a mile or so from the camp, he turned west towards Saddle Mountain. We were able to make pretty good time the rest of the day, and that trail didn't look like he was in too much of a hurry, so I figured maybe we'd been gaining on him. We didn't stop for supper. We just kept right on going, and even after nightfall, there was enough moon so we could still make out his tracks. Well, about 9 o'clock, we were moving through the pass between Saddle Mountain and Porcupine Peak. Getting pretty high up, too. Not very many trees, just a scrub pine every once in a while. Easy scrub. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There. Hold up a minute, Sheriff. Huh? I... I thought I heard something. Huh. No, I guess I was wrong. Or maybe... Maybe the wind's changed. Here. No, no. There it is again. You hear it? You hear it? Yeah, he must be up there, right around that bend. I think we'd better move in on foot. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I rode up on him last night. He seemed tame enough. Well, okay. Uh, well, where'd you walk? Hello, Jagger. Why, well, Mr. Ponce. Thought you was heading another way. Yeah, I sort of changed my mind. 
Come back for another guitar lesson, huh? No. Not exactly. Jaeger, this is Cleet Gentle from Pearl City. Howdy, Mr. Gentle. You, uh... Howdy. You two never met up before, Jaeger, while you were working in Pearl City. Huh? No? No, not that I recollect. Why? Mr. Gentle's the sheriff there. Sheriff? That's right. Well, I was only in town for a few days, and I was sort of on my good behavior. At least was, I, I never had no run-in with the law. Yeah. There's something I can do for you, gents? Jaeger, a fellow was shot the other day. Shot and robbed. Farmer just outside of town. Oh? He didn't recognize the man who did it. He remembers one thing about him, though. A song he was singing. Well, I... I reckon I ain't the only man that gives out with a song once in a while, am I? No. No, but this particular song... Well, it's the one you played for me last night. <laughs> I played a lot of songs for you last night, Mr. Ponson. Silver and Threads Among the Gold. That was the name of it. Well? You said it was a new tune, as I recall. You picked it up back east. Did I? Yeah. Well, ain't you, uh... Kind of jump into conclusions, Mr. Ponson? Nobody's accusing you of anything, Yeager. Well, then just what is it you want? I want you to come back to Pearl City with me. Let Homer Danfield take a good look at you, see if he can identify you. Danfield? Yeah, that's the man that was shot. He's still alive, huh? Do you think he was dead, Yeager? Oh, I, I didn't think nothing about it one way or the other. How much money you got with you? Hmm? Forty, fifty dollars. Mind showing it to me? <laughs> Money looks all the same, don't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here. Yeah. 20, 30, 40, 45, 48. 48 dollars. Well, that's what I said, about 50 bucks. That's what Mr. Danfield had stolen from his China cabinet. About 50 dollars. The money's mine. I was working for the Santa Fe. They just paid me off the other day. You're wearing a gun, I see. Well, so are you. So is Ponce. I'll take it. Sure. All right, Jaeger. Let's go. You want to get started right now? As soon as you're ready. It'll take me a couple of minutes to get my pack together and my horse saddled. Well, I'll give you a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ponson. Yeah, here. Would you mind fastening this onto the back of my saddle? I sure wouldn't want to go off and leave my guitar behind. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> Well, we rode all night, the three of us. Nobody did much talking, but every once in a while, Jaeger had let loose with some humming and some singing. He sure didn't seem very worried about what had happened when he came face to face with Danfield. I, I couldn't make up my mind. Maybe it was just that he had a clear conscience, or maybe he was putting up a good front for our benefit. Anyway, along about 6 o'clock in the morning, we were riding past the O'Hara farm. That meant we were almost there. Danfield's place would be next. Sean O'Hara came running out of the barn carrying a pail of milk. When he saw us, he set the milk down and gave a holler. Hey, Sheriff Jensen, hold up a minute, Sheriff. Oh, no, go there, go. Oh, oh, Scar. Morning, Sean. Ah, aha. So you found the fellow you were looking for, I take it. Yeah, yeah, we found him. Well, it's sure too bad you went to all this trouble. Ah, uh, what do you mean? Uh, poor Mr. Danfield. He is no longer with us. No. He passed away a little before midnight last night. God rest his soul. Oh. Tell me, Sean, did he say anything more before he died? No, Sheriff, not a word. I see. Uh, well, what? Well, looks like you won't have no more use for me, Sheriff. You ain't gonna prefer charges of murder just on account of a song I happen to sing to Ponsard, are you? Well, well, I guess he's right, Sheriff. Yeah. All right, Jaeger. Here's your money and your gun. Thank you. Well, so long, gents. Come on, boy. Jaeger. Yeah? I don't know whether you had anything to do with this or not. I guess nobody will ever know for certain. Except you. I guess that's so. But you'll know it, Jaeger. And if you did it all the rest of your life, you'll know it. That all you want to tell me, Ponce? That's all. Well, so long. What do you 
think, Britt? Did he do it? Uh, Sheriff, I just don't know. Uh, there's some coffee in the kitchen if you'd be liking a cup. Thanks, Sean, but I'd better get in town. Uh-huh. Hey, well, how about you, Mr. Ponsett? Uh, yeah, I... I reckon I could use a cup of coffee. Well, I'll be seeing you. Take it easy. Sure. Sorry you had that ride for nothing, Britt. No, it's all right. I guess I brought it on myself. So long. The kitchen's doors are on this way, Mr. Ponsett. No, that sure was a shame about Homer Dump here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, boy, Pa. Oh, now it's about time you got up, young man. Uh, you, you remember Mr. Ponce, don't you? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, Britt. All right, just fine, Mike. Hey, what are you doing with Toby Yeager? Is he a friend of yours? Mm, no, not exactly. What, are you, you know him, Mike? Oh, well, he was working over on the railroad. We met a couple of times. Played poker over at Red Pilpot's place. Now, Michael, I told you, you can't afford to be losing your money. Oh, to... I never lost, Pa. Not when Toby was in the game. Why, he's got the worst luck any man I ever played with. Take the other night. Railroad paid him off, and he lost every cent of it. Now, what night was that, Mike? Was that the night Homer Danfield was shot? Well, come to think of it, I guess it was. I see. I see. All right, I think maybe I'll skip that coffee for the time being, Sean. Thanks, anyway. Jaeger? Jaeger? Huh? Oh. What is it now, Ponce? That's you and me going to town, huh? What for? Easy going, easy. That $48 you're carrying, that isn't Santa Fe money. What do you mean? You lost your pay the other night in a poker game, all of it. Oh? Where'd you get the $48, Jaeger? What might be kind of hard to explain, Ponson? It sure would. Looks like you was wrong, don't it? Huh? Well, you said if... I was a fellow who shot him. Nobody'd know it except me. You shot him, huh? Sure. Well, then I was wrong. Maybe we'd better go back to Pearl City, huh? Sure. Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Ben Wright, Burt Holland, Will Wright, and Barney Phillips, who played Toby. The guitarist was Bob Bain. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Oh, by the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the Six Shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. McDonald Carey stars in Jason and the Golden Fleece tonight on the NBC Radio Network.